almost looks like a trinomial, but the problem is, is that we have a sin and a cos mixed together. So what we do in these situations is we use our grade 11 formula, which was sin squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1. And we will eliminate this one over here. The way that we eliminate it is we, we get that one by itself in this formula. So that's going to make us, or well, that's going to give us cos squared x equals to 1 minus sin squared x. And so you're going to put that in the place of cos squared x. And so your equation is now going to become sin x minus 2, then in brackets, 1 minus sin squared x plus 2 equals 0. Then we simply go ahead and simplify. So it's minus 2 plus 2 sin squared x plus 2 equals to 0. And then what's really nice is that this minus 2 and this plus 2 cancel out. And so we're left with sin x plus 2 sin squared x equals to 0. We now take out a common factor of sin x. And then we're left with 1 plus 2 sin x. And so then we can say, therefore, sin x is equal to 0 or 1 plus 2 sin x equals to 0. And so that means 2 sin x equals to negative 1. And so if we had to divide by 2, we'd get that. All right, so we have two answers now. Sin x equals to 0 or sin x equals to negative a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my page in half. And we go look at each one individually. So sin x equals to 0 and then sin x equals to negative a half. So in the previous question, number 70, I said that whenever you have a 0, minus 1, or 1, you don't want to solve that by looking at the quadrants. You rather just want to draw your graph. And it's a sin graph for this one, so that looks like that. And then you literally just look off the graph. Where is this equal to 0? Well, it's there, there, there. And of course, if the graph had to keep going, it would keep doing the same thing, right? It would keep repeating like that. So then to give the answer, we say x must be equal to, and then we look at the first one. Now that's 0 degrees. And then we know that this is 180. This is 360. So it looks like it's repeating itself every 180 degrees. So we can just say plus k times 180, where k is an element of z. And that is all you need to do. Now for this one, we do the normal approach where we get our reference angle. Now remember, don't put the negative on the calculator when getting your reference angle. You're just going to take the positive. And so that's going to give you a reference angle of 30 degrees. Now, the negative tells us that we are in the negative quadrants for sin, so I'm going to divide my page into two more halves. And if I look on my cast diagram, I know that sin is going to be negative in the tan and cos quadrant. So those are the two quadrants I'm going to work in. So that's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And so in quadrant 3, I'm going to say x equals to 180 plus, because that's how quadrant 3 goes. It's a 180 plus. Then the reference angle. Then I'm going to say k times 360. k is an element of z. Then in quadrant 4, we know that that's the 360 minus. And then we're going to say our reference angle. And then plus k times 360. k is an element of z. And then we can solve x equals to 210 plus k times 360. k is an element of z. And then for this one, it's x equals to 330 plus k times 360. k is an element of z. 